Photoshop Elements 13 has some great new features for photographers and scrapbookers alike. I'm Linda Sadcast, Adobe scrapbooking expert, and I'll start with my personal top three favorite features. When you first open Photoshop Elements 13, you may be surprised to see a browser right inside Photoshop Elements. It's called Elements Live, or eLive, and it has its own button at the top. The other three standard views, Quick, Guided, and Expert, are just a click away, and Photoshop Elements will remember which view you had open when you close the program and reopen it. But eLive is very cool. Adobe is actually scouring the web to find the best content related to photography, learning Photoshop elements, and inspiration, among other things. And it's available right inside Photoshop Elements 13. Simply click on one of the display cards to open your regular browser and go to that particular website. New content will be added continually. And notice the word help up here. This takes you directly to the page on adobe.com where you can get help for Photoshop Elements. No need to search through Adobe's website to find help. So eLive is a great new feature that will be constantly updated. My second favorite feature is Content Aware Fill. What you say? What is Content Aware Fill? Well, Photoshop has had it for a while and I'm thrilled to see it in Photoshop Elements because it's great for automatically replacing items you don't want with other content from your photo. Here's an example of a photo problem. This extra leg in the upper right corner doesn't do this photo any favors. So I'm going to duplicate the layer, Control or Command J, and get the lasso tool, and then click and drag an outline around this leg. We're just going to get rid of it with Content Aware Fill. Then go up to the menu bar and choose Edit, Fill Selection. When the dialog box comes up, choose Content Aware from the menu, use a normal blend mode and 100% opacity, and click OK. And Photoshop Elements will fill it with what it thinks should be in there, some other kind of vegetation. Press Ctrl D in Windows or Command D on a Mac to deselect. Now you may need to make some minor adjustments with the clone stamp tool, especially if you see a repeating pattern, but this did really a very nice job of filling in this area with similar content. Here's the way it looked before, and here's what it looks like now. So that's Content Aware Fill, one of my favorite new features in Photoshop Elements 13. The next feature that made my top three was Inside Stroke Outline. Notice the difference between these two photos. The one on the left has an outside stroke, and that's what we used to have available in Photoshop Elements. That, or a centered stroke, both of which resulted in these rounded corners that look so ugly. With an inside stroke, you get a sharp, pointed corner that looks great. Just so you know, there is currently no preview thumbnail for inside stroke in the Styles panel. So instead, access strokes from the menu bar by choosing Layer, Layer Style, Style Settings. And then you'll want to check Stroke, and then open the menu, and choose Inside, and click OK. And there I have those nice, sharp corners again. So those are my top three new features, but there are some other really nifty features in Photoshop Elements 13 as well. For example, I really like the new crop suggestions. With the crop tool selected, you'll see thumbnails in tool options that are suggestions for how to crop your photo. Mouse over a crop thumbnail to see that crop outline show on your actual photo. And you can just go through these and see which one you like best. And if you click on one, it will make it the active crop, but you can still move the edges around or the corners around. And if you want a particular aspect ratio, such as 8 by 10, you can open the menu and select it from there. Let's try 5 by 7 here. And then it will give you new crop ratios for that. So I can now click on this one to make it my crop ratio, and I can move that around and then click on the check mark to commit the change. There's also a fix in Photoshop Elements 13. It fixes a problem in Photoshop Elements 12 where moving a file from the photo bin onto another document 
caused it to resize to the boundary of the destination document. But in Photoshop Elements 13, it doesn't do that anymore. As you can see, the button stayed its original size. So that problem has been fixed, but now Photoshop Elements 13 changes files moved from the photo bin onto another document into what's called Smart Objects. You can see this little icon here in the lower right corner of the thumbnail on this layer, and that indicates that it is a smart object. Adobe has gone back and forth on this issue. In some versions they've implemented smart objects, and in other versions they haven't. In Photoshop Elements 13, we're back to smart objects. Now some scrapbookers don't like smart objects because there are many things you can't do to smart objects unless you simplify them. Other people love them because they can resize papers, elements, and photos to their heart's content during the design phase of scrapbooking without any loss of quality due to resizing. If you're in the don't like them camp, there are plenty of other ways to move files onto another document. And you can also simplify a smart object by choosing layer, simplify layer. Another new feature has to do with Facebook. You can now easily create a custom cover photo for Facebook. You'll find this option in the create menu. As of this recording, there are only two themes available, but I've been told that there will be more themes when Photoshop Elements 13 ships. Photo Merge Compose is another great feature that I think a lot of people will enjoy. It simplifies the process of cutting an object or person from one photo and placing it into another photo. You can find this feature in the Enhance menu when you're in Expert Mode. You're told step by step what to do and the results can be quite fun. I do have a video on how to use Photo Merge Compose in case you're interested. Here are some examples that I did. So I started with this photo of my husband and then he took a photo of me and then I used Photo Merge Compose to put us together in the same photo. Then here I have a photo of a tulip and I wanted to take this tulip out of here and put it into this arrangement right up there. So here's my final arrangement. It's always exciting when there's a new tool in the toolbar. The new tool for this version is the Refine Selection Brush, which is nested with the Quick Selection tool. So it's this one right here. If I click on it, you'll see that it has these little icons down here that you can select. And the way it works is that you first create a selection outline, and then if you have an area that isn't quite right, then you use the Refine Selection Brush. The brush automatically changes to plus or minus based on your location to the selection outline, and it allows you to click and push the selection outline toward your desired edge. My personal opinion is that it's easier to simply adjust a selection edge with the lasso tool, but a beginner might find it helpful to use the push method with the Refine Selection Brush. Photoshop Elements 13 has three new guided edits in the Photo Effects category, and they all have to do with black and white effects. Black and white color pop makes it very easy to select a color from a photo and gives you the tools to refine your selection. You can also choose a custom color, and you can refine the effect by adding or subtracting from the color. And then also you can increase the saturation if you want to. The black and white selection guided edit allows you to select an object to turn into black and white. You have good control over the process. So here I would just click on the selection brush and I can make my size a little bit bigger here and then just begin to click and drag over here to make the area that I want turn into black and white. And then if I want to, and I can refine the edge with this as well, and take away detail or add detail, but I can click on Invert Effect and that makes this area the one that shows up and everything else be black and white. The third black and white guided edit has some very nice black and white presets. So you could click on these to see which one you like the best. And once you've chosen it, then you have the option to add a diffuse glow, so I might click on that. And then you're also given the option to add or remove. So I can click on remove. I'm going to move the opacity up and let's just take some of that effect 
out of the eye there. And that looks good to me. And then you can also increase the contrast if you want. And you can click that multiple times. So those are three very nice guided edits. And here's a nifty feature. Photoshop Elements 13 has added more choices in the effects panel of the quick mode. So now when you click on an effect, you get to see more thumbnails that show you variations of the original effect. And when you click on one, it adds that effect to your photo. To finish up, I wanted to mention that Photoshop Elements 13 supports high DPI on Windows and Retina Display on Macs. Also, the organizer has a new photo display and an enhanced slideshow. So that is just a quick run through of the fabulous new features of Photoshop Elements 13. If you're interested in learning more about Photoshop Elements or digital scrapbooking, go to www.digitalscrapper.com.